Hey, hey everybody, this is Larry. I'm doing this poem as part of a contest, so you're gonna watch me live as I go through my thoughts as I'm coding. Uh, there'll be an explanation near the end, and for more context, there'll be a link below on the actual screencast of the contest. Uh, how did you do? Let me know how you do. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and here we go. Uh, okay. No, a Q4, Paint House 3. So, yeah, so this one I recognized. So I thought it was the, yeah, I think Larry's talking. I, I think I was so frustrated that given the other Larry's talking a little bit during the contest, uh, given I should be focusing more. But this one, I, I, I had inkling that uh, at this point uh, of the prom, I thought it was going to be dynamic programming. Um, but just wanted to make sure. And, and, and I think the kind of annoying thing is that for me, they didn't um, constraints out the end, so I had to go up, back, up, uh, back and forth in a couple of ways. And they used hmm. M and Ns, which I guess is okay, but it was confusing for me. And I kept to keep on going back and forth to be like, M what's M? Of or like, M, is to, M to be 100, but what is M? M is the number of houses. And I literally asked myself a few times this, uh, this thing. Target is... Yeah, but in my mind, I was just, I thought, I wasn't sure about what neighborhoods meant. So I thought there's a possibility. And in terms of painted houses, I thought that maybe it's some sort of N cube, like divide and conquer split in the middle type dynamic programming. So that was kind of my initial thought, even though uh, that isn't right. But, but I was just trying to think, okay, what does that mean? And then I look again at the constraints a little bit more. Um, Yeah, so I'm about you know, two minutes into this problem. But uh, at this point, I think I knew what I want to do, and I knew what the states of what I wanted to be. Because uh, I was like, okay, let's just start by going one house at a time, and you increment a new neighborhood when the house, when you paint mm -hmm. the current house a different color than the previous house. Um, the, the analysis, I will have a more detailed analysis in, in, at the end, definitely uh, fast forward or skip forward if you're wanting to jump in the explanation. But right now I'm still going over my thought process. I'm like, okay, we, we need to care about the index of the house we're painting, the, the last uh, color that we did and the number of neighborhoods. Also in retrospect, I wish I chose a, lo a shorter variable name because neighborhoods is just really hard. Like I keep on mistyping as you will see, but yeah. But now I'm doing the base case. So basically, if we painted the last house, then what does that mean? Uh, and I wanted to set up N, even though we have an M and an N, so it's just very confusing to kind of put them together. Uh, but you'll see what I do with it later. But okay, but let's say we painted all the houses, then we now check the number of neighborhoods that we have. And, and I think I'm just double checking uh, something. I had to copy and paste because I was worried about typo. So basically, if you reach the target neighborhoods, you have zero cost at the end because that means there's a way to complete. Um, And then now, I mean, I had a shortcut that just say, hey, if you have more neighborhoods than target, well, you can't go, like if you have five neighborhoods and your target is four neighborhoods, well, you can't really go back to from five to four, right? So I just skip that ahead. It's not really necessary, but it, I just, it just made sense. Uh, and then now we just paint it for each color, for each color X.
but only if we could paint the house. So that's what I'm adding here. So if the color of the house is zero, that means we can paint the house. And then now we, I think I that I should have kept the if statement. If the, if I had that if statement, then it would have been. Um, but I was just trying to go ahead. So now I just want to do the base case, or well, not a base case, but the different case of if the house is already painted. Well, let's paint this house col this got color, and then we just for the number of neighborhoods add whether they're equal. Uh, unfortunately, this is actually a typo, and that actually cost me a lot of time debugging, which we'll find out in a second. Um, but But yeah, I because I, if I had kept the if statements, usually I do, uh, then it would be clear what the basic or the, the different transitions are. But basically here, for each color x from one to number of colors, um, we paint that house with that color, and then if and then st uh, increment the number of neighborhoods if they are uh, are equal, or well, if they in this case if they're equal because I'm I messed up, but but yeah, and then now I just, that's pretty much it. Um, so I've, I've gotten this at 23 minutes, which is pretty quick. Uh, I mean, a little bit longer than that. I would have tested anyway, right? I'm trying to think uh, uh, whether we should start zero or one or target, but it should be zero. I don't know why we'll target. Um, so I ran taste cases. I was like, okay, this is not right at all. But I also didn't remember to put in the painting cost. So... So yeah, so I knew that I had to put in the painting cost. But sadly speaking, that's pretty much it. This should be the complete code. But I have a typo in, and some I I don't know how much of it is a typo per se, but I had a miss. Uh, focus on the last is equal to equal to x. What I want to say is, if the how the if the colors are different, increment by one. If the houses are the same, then keep it the same. Because at this point, I thought I was done. Yeah. To be honest, like I was like I don't think there's anything more unless I missed an edge case. So it was just that I had a typo that I debugged for six minutes. So that was kind of painful. Uh, anyway, watch me debug it and then watch me fi figure it out. Uh, hang out with Larry. And I will see you, well, the other lab will see you now, but I'm going to just hang out. <laughs>
Edge cases. Oh man, I am dumb. Oh, oh, oh. oh my god, that was a uh, 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 paint house three. Ooh, paint house three. So I knew how to do this immediately. Let's refresh this real quick. Paint house three. So I knew how to do this immediately, but I just had a silly mistake with the signs that took me a couple of minutes to debug. Uh, which, if you solve everything in ten minutes, like a couple of minutes is a long time. But so that that the reason. So yeah, the short story is that this is dynamic programming, and Let's go over this a little bit because this is, you know, it's easy to say dynamic programming, but it's hard to, you know, convert that into a solution sometimes, or maybe for me many times. Uh, so the idea here is, is kind of tricky, right? So you're given uh, a thing, like, I don't know, let's just say, okay, oh, here, houses. So let's say you're giving... Let's say you have a possible answer, right? So the way that I thought about it was that, okay, given this, how how many neighborhoods are there? Well, if you're going from left to right, the number of neighborhoods is just the number of changes from left to right, right? So 1 to 2, 2 to 3, 3 to 2, and 2 to 1. So I thought about that. Um, and from that, that, that allow us to give us a dimension, right? And which is the target. And target is going to be less than M, or M is less than 100, right? So from that, uh, and if we're at a given point in the uh, painting the way, do we care about anything that goes before? Not really. The only thing that I cared about was just making sure that, well, when you're painting this house, let's say this is a zero. When I'm painting this house, what color can I paint this? Well, if it's one and three, then it begins a new neighborhood from what we just talked about as the prefix. And if it's two, then it has this, it continues the previous neighborhood, right? So that those are the two possibilities that we uh, that can happen uh, in terms of painting a color. So from that, what we said was that we only look at the previous house. So that's how we built our what we call the state of the dynamic programming. And from that, you know, index obviously could at most be n. And the, the, this is confusing, so you saw me actually renamed colors to the number of colors. But basically, yeah, so index is the number of houses, right? Because it's the number of houses that you already paint. So index can only go from 0 to n. Uh, the last, it, last is just last color. So last color is it's just the color of the last house. 
So that's just from zero to colors. This is off by one. Uh, if you want to be strict, is this technically the this actually goes to oops, this actually goes to n, uh, and actually this does go to colors because I forget that if we do one index and then we use zero for the no color, um, and then target. Well, target the the maximum of neighborhoods can only be n, so it's just zero to n. Right? So what is the complexity, right? Then in this case, this complexity or the space complexity is easier to calculate because that's the number of possible inputs to this, and then we use LRU cache to hash that into uh, a memorization. Hash that into memorization. I think that's just really bad terms, but basically you memorize these type of inputs, and each of them has its own space. So it's uh, for space, this is easy to calculate in theory. So it's n squared times colors, right? And for this, given that it's 100 times 100 times 20, that's roughly, I mean, that's pretty okay, right? And then the other is uh, running time, one time. So that's the way that I always think about it, and it, uh, because I get this question a lot, especially when it comes to top-down memorization, the way that I analyze dynamic programming uh, memorization is basically it's just the number of well, it's not, oh, number of states times the one one time complexity per state. In this case, this is just the number of states we always said is in this thing times the one time complexity per state, which in this case is at worst all of colors because we have a for loop here that does colors, roughly speaking. And in this case, that is just O of n square times colors square. Uh, so yeah, so that's the one time complexity, that's the space time complexity, and you could do the math to make sure that they're fast enough, uh, and they are. Um, and yeah, going over the base case, just to be clear, uh, the base case is once we paint all the houses, if we if the number of neighborhoods hit our target down zero, if otherwise we return negative infinity, we do this just to be faster, though it's not necessary per se. But basically, if you have more neighborhoods than targets, then you can never go back to the target, right? So we return infinity. Otherwise, if the house, if we can paint this house, meaning the index is zero, then we try to paint this house with all the possible colors, starting a new neighborhood. If if it is not equal to the last color. This is this syntax is what got me a couple of minutes of penalty, not penalty per se, but just debugging because I was just being a little bit uh, lazy. But basically, in Python and some certain languages, a true value return is uh, it's equivalent to the number one. So that's why I did this way. But I wouldn't urge it. What I would maybe recommend rewriting is doing something like, uh, especially if you're learning. So basically. And this is double negative, so this is bad. But I would have something like if 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 the current painted color is equal to the last color, we just do the neighborhood because we don't increase the neighborhood. Otherwise, we return uh, plus one for increasing the neighborhood. So this is hopefully much easier to read. Uh, and then, lastly, if we cannot paint the if we cannot paint the house like the index is already in there, then we just do the same thing again. I would rewrite this to be similar to this, where you say okay. If the current color is equal to the last color, then do this, and so forth. And of course, you increment the index, and you also in, um, add that to the cost of painting that color with that house. Um, and then at the very end, just do a minor check for infinity, so that to, for impossible. Um, but yeah, uh, this is probably too hard for an interview question, though though the skills of analyzing this one time uh, uh, complexity and the space complexity will be handy. Uh, just And just nice to be better at dynamic programming in general. Uh, in terms of um, comparative programming, this is probably pretty straightforward-ish. Uh, if you have trouble getting it, I'm not trying to be mean about it. But I don't know. I think some of that is also that the code contest, for whatever reason, has been giving a lot of dynamic programming problems recently. So I've gotten better about it, but and but you could see from the um, from the other people's self speed that a lot of people has gotten better about it as well. So um, so yeah.